Distinguished members of the press, our second guest today is the Secretary General of NATO, my distinguished friend Jens Stoltenberg. Following the disaster of the earthquake, he has paid this visit to exhibit the solidarity of NATO with us. The distinguished Secretary General has played a very active attitude since the very beginning as to the undertakings of NATO. He called us, he sent us messages and he always asked what additional steps could be taken and for that reason I would like to thank him for the solidarity they have exhibited and for the support they have rendered of course addressing the wounds of the disaster that we have experienced is being supported by other allies they have sent search and rescue teams in an accelerated manner I shared the figures of these this morning the uh, more than 3,500 of the search and rescue personnel in the field came from our allies, and they also provided in cash and in kind assistance to meet the emergency needs. The NATO authorities, since the very beginning of the disaster, immediately took action upon our request. And the NATO Euro Atlantic Disaster Response Coordination Center has been coordinating this assistance since the beginning. The NATO Council has also decided the containers and the tents that are suitable for winter conditions to be sent to our country from their inventory and this is going to host more than 3,000 people and it's going to be actually serving for six months in the first phase and it could be extended if need be. These are going to be deployed in Iskenderun and Hatay and of course the speedy transportation setting up and the operation of such accommodation needs are issues that we are jointly working on in the field. Our colleagues are are actually working in the preliminary activities with the NATO teams. For this, yesterday, we made a demand for the strategic air transportation facilities of our NATO allies to be activated immediately. The Secretary General actually provided the initial package of 40 containers and the 20,000 winter tents from Pakistan to be transported to our country and has actually conveyed our demand from our allies to provide cargo planes. We we are grateful for these steps that he has taken. There are going to be many tents provided from Pakistan. We have also placed our orders and we are doing our utmost for these tents to be brought to our country. We have mobilized all our efforts and some friendly countries are also providing us air cargo planes and we are grateful for these distinguished members of the press. The distinguished Secretary General is going to also be meeting with our president today. And following uh, his meeting with the president, he will be traveling to the region. And our Minister of National Defense, Mr. Hulusi Akar, who is already in Hatay, and he's the minister responsible for that uh, area, is going to be meeting the Secretary General, and they will be visiting the earthquake zone, and uh, they will also be discussing uh, the uh, supplies of the accommodation that is going to be provided for NATO. They will be visiting the site uh, for the preparation uh, of uh, these accommodations accommodation facilities. Once again, we're grateful to uh, their efforts and to the efforts of our allies. Of course, having uh, made this opportunity today, we also discussed certain regional issues, the war in Ukraine, the extension of the grain deal, and also other uh, efforts, uh, the uh, latest status in the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. We had an opportunity to evaluate all these issues. Of course, uh, like always, these are not the priority today, but uh, we also uh, discussed uh, the uh, membership uh, to NATO for uh, Sweden and Finland. We uh, also shared our expectations and also the uh, trilateral uh, MOU and fulfillment of the commitments of uh, this MOU. 
we underlined the importance of this once again. And of course, so there are certain steps, uh, especially steps to be taken by the Swedish side. And the provocations that took place uh, have not been beneficial, especially the provocations in Sweden have not uh, contributed positively. But in the end, as uh, Turkey, we're always supporting in the strengthening and uh, the uh, enlargement of NATO. We are one of the countries that has an immense contribution. And we do believe that as an important ally, as uh, Turkey, we believe strengthening NATO is important and we will continue to provide our support to NATO activities. Such support shall continue. As you know, we are one of the countries that has the greatest, actually one of the first five countries that has greatest contribution to NATO activities and we are one of the first eight countries that have the largest share of the general budget. Such a contribution shall continue. With these thoughts, I would like to once again uh, say welcome to my distinguished friend Jens Stoltenberg and once more uh, indicate that we're thankful for this visit. Minister Sauerjur, there, Mevlut, it's uh, good to see you uh, again and thank you for your warm uh, welcome uh, and thank you for your strong personal commitment uh, to our alliance uh, and uh, to uh, NATO. Uh, today, I have come to show my solidarity following the devastating earthquake that struck Turkey and uh, Syria last uh, week. This is the deadliest uh, natural disaster on Alliance territory since the foundation of uh, NATO. On behalf of NATO, uh, I offer my deepest uh, condolences to the Turkish people and the families and the loved ones uh, of all those who lost their lives uh, or were injured. We salute the courage of the Turkish first responders and we mourn with you. NATO allies lowered their flags in solidarity after the earthquake. And at this week's uh, defense ministerial uh, meeting, we observed a moment of silence to honor the victims. In your time of need, NATO stands with Turkey. The day after the earthquake, NATO's Disaster Response Center issued an immediate request for assistance to all NATO allies and partners. Since then, thousands of emergency response personnel have been deployed to Turkey to support the relief uh, efforts, including with search and rescue teams, firefighters, medical personnel, and seismic experts. NATO allies continue to provide support. Military aircraft from the Netherlands, Norway, the UK, and the United States are working day and night to transport international aid to Turkey and perform medical evacuations. Other allies like Albania, Canada, and Germany are providing financial and other types of aid. And across NATO, ordinary citizens are raising millions of euros in support to Turkey. This is true and deep solidarity. I also welcome the contributions of our invitees, Finland and Sweden, showing solidarity in action. In particular, I thank Sweden for its initiative to hold an international donor conference in March. The focus going forward will be on reconstruction and supporting the displaced. That is why NATO is now setting up temporary housing for thousands of displaced people. In addition, NATO will also use our strategic airlift capabilities to transport tens of thousands of tents to Turkey in the coming days and weeks. All of this will help to save lives. NATO has a team on the ground working hand in hand with the Turkish authorities. Later today, I will meet with some of the personnel supporting these efforts and thank them for their professionalism and their dedication. So, Minister Shavoshoglu, thank you again for hosting me today. This is a time for NATO allies and partners to come together, standing alongside the people of Turkey, 
today and tomorrow in strong solidarity. Uh, Hüseyin Ayatsever, Reuters. I'm here. My question goes to uh, Mr. Secretary General. Uh, uh, Mr. Stoltenberg, Turkish President Erdogan signaled that uh, Turkey could ratify uh, Finland's application to NATO alone. Uh, you already uh, referred to this issue this week. You said the main question is not whether together uh, their uh, ratification. The main question is uh, that uh, they should be ratified as soon as possible. So uh, my question is, uh, is there a, a deadline for NATO? I mean, not a uh, official deadline, but uh, would, would, it be, would it cause a problem for NATO if Turkey uh, does not complete the ratification process till Vilnius? Uh, summit. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, Turkey objects Sweden's application uh, mainly on terrorism related issues. Uh, and you also emphasize that Turkey has legitimate concerns on this uh, terrorism issue. Uh, so, uh, how this fight against terrorism issue uh, will be discussed in uh, Vilnius summit? Sayın Bakan, size de e, bu konuda İsveç, Finlandiya konusunda e, kısa bir soru yöneltmek isterim. Bugünkü görüşmenizde Sayın Genel, Genel Sekreterli bu konuda e, yeni bir e, boyut ele alındı mı İsveç, Finlandiya e, başvuruları konusunda? So my consistent position uh, has been and uh, remains that uh, the time has come to ratify both uh, Finland and Sweden and make them full members of our alliance. Uh, they have both made uh, big steps since we signed the um, uh, joint memorandum between uh, Finland, Sweden and Turkey in, uh, in July at the NATO summit in Madrid uh, last year. Um, they have removed any restrictions on arms exports, uh, strengthened their legislation on uh, terrorism, um, and uh, Sweden is also uh, amending their constitution and uh, stepped up the cooperation with Turkey, uh, also established a permanent mechanism to continue to work closely with Turkey in, in the fight against uh, terrorism. Um, so I continue to, uh, to, to uh, believe that the time is now uh, to ratify both uh, Finland and, uh, and uh, Sweden. Let me also add that I... I, I fully recognize that Turkey has uh, legitimate security concerns. No other NATO ally has suffered more terrorist uh, uh, attacks than uh, Turkey. And that's the reason why uh, uh, terrorism was an important part of the trilateral memorandum agreed in July. That's why uh, for NATO the fight against terrorism is uh, one of the main tasks. And why, of course, uh, as we prepare for the Wilderness Summit, as we continue to adapt uh, the alliance, uh, terrorism will be uh, high on the NATO uh, agenda. Um, and I also believe that to have Finland and Sweden inside the alliance would actually strengthen our uh, capabilities uh, to uh, fight uh, international uh, terrorism. Uh, then, uh, uh, on your question uh, of, uh, of uh, whether uh, uh, uh, Finland and Sweden uh, should be ratified uh, together, um, uh, or whether uh, it's possible to ratify Finland first and uh, Sweden uh, afterwards, uh, well, again, my position is that uh, both can be ratified now. Uh, but the main issue is not whether uh, they are ratified together. The main issue is that uh, Finland and Sweden are ratified as soon as uh, possible. Uh, then let me also say that I know that the burning of the Quran um, in uh, Stockholm um, has created uh, strong reactions in Turkey. Uh, and I understand and I share the pain uh, because I personally regard uh, the burning of the Holy Book as a disgraceful act. Uh, and uh, I uh, understand the feelings of Muslims in Turkey and around uh, the world. Um, and therefore, I also strongly condemn uh, the burning, but also uh, welcome the fact that uh, uh, Sweden has been able to prevent um, uh, other uh, 
manifestations uh, with uh, the burning of the uh, Quran as part of the uh, manifestation. And, uh, uh, and I welcome also that the Swedish government and the Swedish prime minister uh, has clearly condemned uh, this disgraceful uh, act. Uh, not all um, acts which are uh, disgraceful or immoral or provocative are illegal. Uh, but it is important uh, to have a strong position, and that's uh, what we have seen clearly from uh, the Swedish uh, government. Uh, so, um, um, uh, for me, this to just demonstrates that uh, uh, Sweden and Finland uh, understand uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, are implementing um, uh, policies which uh, recognizes uh, uh, the, the, the concerns that uh, Turkey has expressed and also why um, I think that the time has come uh, uh, to ratify. Let me add one more thing, and that is that this is, this is a Turkish decision. Uh, it's, it's, the, uh, uh, it's the Turkish uh, uh, government, the Turkish parliament, uh, that decides uh, on the issue of ratification. And it's a Turkish decision alone, uh, because uh, what has uh, to be decided uh, by Turkey is whether to ratify the accession documents, and that is a decision that Turkey has to take. Thank you very much. Of course, uh, during today's uh, meeting, as I have uh, expressed that we did focus on this issue. In relation to membership of Sweden and Finland, the uh, process was going in parallel. And uh, the uh, declaration of uh, President Erdogan in relation to Finland's membership after this declaration, this was something that we discussed with the relevant countries and with NATO. The meaning of this is that uh, the NATO membership process of Finland could be evaluated separately from Sweden's uh, uh, process. And I do believe that this is going to be uh, co coming to the agenda in the meeting today with the pr uh, President Erdogan. But in relation to membership of these two countries, the attitude of Turkey has been very clear, and there is no secret agenda behind it. Meeting of the concerns of Turkey, not just in, on paper, but in action as well. Uh, on the other hand, we did discuss uh, all of these since the very beginning with the uh, contribution of the Secretary General. We discussed this in Madrid. And uh, as uh, Turkey, we have always uh, respected uh, Mr. Stoltenberg and uh, we have uh, discussed uh, th this uh, in uh, a courageous manner and he has always been giving in this process and contributing and of course we do know that uh, the membership of these two countries are important with us uh, during these negotiations and while we were signing the trilateral MOU we were also together in the end these two countries took certain steps we did not deny these and we are always uh, believing that the po steps uh, some of the steps that have been taken have been very positive but especially on uh, in, in relation to Sweden the obligations of Sweden, saying that all the uh, full obligations of Sweden have been fulfilled, is not going to be a realistic approach. We have not seen the concrete steps yet. And of course here, yes, they have taken steps to, to take uh, the legislation to a much more firm stance and made a constitutional amendment. Why? Uh, but why this amendment was uh, undertaken? As it was indicated in the uh, MOU, financing of terrorism and uh, recruits uh, for terrorism and uh, also uh, propaganda for terrorism, these were all uh, to be eliminated and uh, prevented. The law has been amended, but the same activities of PKK and YPD are continuing, like recruits to the terrorist organization, like the financing uh, of uh, terrorism, and the symbols of uh, 
the P or terrorist organization together with the posters of uh, the uh, secessionist leader of uh, this organization, they are still being exhibited. In the end, these uh, legislations and legislative amendments were not done to make us happy. They were done to uh, eliminate and prevent such acts, and they need to fulfill the requirements of this legislation, just like they do not allow propaganda for Daesh. They shouldn't be allowing propaganda for PKK. And of course, this was uh, approved by uh, this. Uh, there were two threats that we identified. One was Russia, and the second one was terrorism in Madrid. So Turkey's, uh, Turkey has uh, concerns need to be met. Burning of the Holy Quran and uh, Islamophobia and such uh, hate crime and such racism is not just uh, to be evaluated in the context of NATO membership of these two countries. The, we also are aware of the fact that these are acts taken to eliminate Sweden's membership and uh, we know that these are being done by people who are deprived of any wisdom whatsoever but this is a hate crime this is uh, racism and this is against humanity and of course so these are against international law these are against uh, human rights and this is a criminal offense so it's not like it's a criminal offense for me and not for them anti-semitism is a, a crime against humanity, Islamophobia is uh, against uh, uh, hate crime and against humanity. It's not uh, interpreted uh, per se differently, but we need to take into consideration international norms accordingly and eliminate this. In the end, we do not have a uh, relatively major problem with respect to Finland, but we are always uh, underlining that Sweden should take concrete steps, and it was not just us that mentioned uh, this, but uh, Tobias Bostrom also uh, visited uh, Turkey following the Swedish Prime Minister's visit, and when he uh, went to the Parliament, this was something that he heard from all par uh, parties in the Parliament. This is about political parties, and therefore both Sweden and Finland need to take these steps, uh, and uh, otherwise we're not against the ex uh, enhancing of NATO alliance or the strengthening of uh, the NATO alliance. Shaduman Turkay from Demiran News Agency. My question is to Minister Çavuşoğlu. The U.S. Secretary of State is to pay a visit to Turkey on 19th to 20th of February. Is the program of this visit certain? When are you going to meet with Secretary Blinken? And what are going to be the topics that you discuss? Thank you very much. This is actually a visit that was planned and uh, prior to the earthquake and uh, uh, on 18th of January, during our meeting uh, in uh, Washington, D.C., we discussed uh, uh, that uh, the Secretary Blinken was to pay a, vi a visit to our country after the Munich uh, Security uh, Conference. Uh, we were actually planning May either today or tomorrow, and uh, most possibly after the Munich uh, Security Conference, uh, he is going to be visiting uh, our country uh, on Monday morning. We will be having uh, our deliberations uh, together here in Ankara. Of course, uh, we are going to be thankful for the support they have rendered uh, in relation to the earthquake. And they have constantly been in contact with us. And uh, Mr. Bedenkin called me twice uh, after the earthquake, but both from Ankara and uh, Washington through our diplomatic missions and our ministries, they have been asking whether they uh, can provide any additional support. We are grateful for the support they have already rendered. These are going to be the issues that we're going to tackle. As you know, we have a strategic mechanism to resolve uh, the current problems, to overcome them, and to focus on the positive agenda, and also to to uh, develop our relations in each and every field. Uh, President Erdogan also agreed with President Biden in Rome uh, about all these aspects. We are going to be talking about these. We're going to be talking about bilateral relations. Uh, obviously, we are going to be discussing the uh, NATO membership of Sweden and Finland about uh, the uh, solidarity amongst the NATO allies. Uh, bilateral as well as regional issues will be discussed uh, 
likewise uh, the war in Ukraine. But uh, after the agenda, uh, which uh, our colleagues are working on, and following uh, the uh, deliberations, we will have a press meeting and we will convey our messages. Thank you.